Hey guys, I'll apologize right off the bat with the wind. I'm outside, obviously. There's Roxanne. <clears throat> well, guess what? We're going to be pulling apart the upper part of the engine and finding out why it's blowing oil everywhere. The dealer was under warranty, replacing the oil cooler. Well, it's only been about two months and uh, it's blowing oil everywhere. So let's see what they did not do right. All right, I'm going to try to walk you through this real quick. Um, as I go and do it. Anyway, you got to take off this cover, which is simple. It just pops up, then two tabs, sticks it in the back there. We got to take off that intake right there. Then there's another one underneath. There's the oil cooler stem right there with the little hexagon thing. He's way down in the bottom. But we got to pull off a lot of this stuff on the side here. Um, this cable, let me show you, let me put this down. This cable right here was not even plugged together when I got it back from the dealer after they did it. And it kept giving me an engine light, uh, low voltage. Um, so I ended up having to take this off, find it, plug it back in. So that makes me believe that they didn't put this thing all back together correctly. But we'll take a look at it and see. I'm not going to accuse them of anything until I see it. But I will show you guys how to do this. It's real simple. It just takes time and patience really just like everything else got to pull off all these hoses here this your intake on the front here um the tube so that whole intake comes off i think there's two tens there two tens over here um and then you got some eights underneath so as we go i'll do it and i'll do a time lapse when i'm actually unbolting things that way you guys are not bored talk to you in a bit all right to take this guy off here you got two eight millimeters for these uh, straps that go on here. Get them off and then a 10 millimeter right here and here. Um, pull off the coolant line. That'll pull this guy out of there. Let's get to that. This guy came out like this. One other thing, you've got a sensor right here. This cable, make sure you unclip that guy. You'll have to unclip your throttle body. And there's another one right here. One of the other sensor units. I don't know what they are. My correct calling of it. I don't know what it's called. Anyway, got to take them off to get this guy out. When I take him out, I'm actually going to spray him and clean him out in there. It looks like it's a little dirty. Not bad. But definitely has a little bit of dirt. So we're going to clean him out real good while we, he's off. Um, and that's it. Let's get to that now. All right. So... Pulled off uh, vacuum hoses and lines off of here. Took this, this goes, guy goes to the air box. They all snap into these little clips right here on the inside of this intake. But these gotta get that moved out of the way. So I may actually tie them up to the hood up there, get them up and out of the way like that. This guy you just gotta deal with. Um, now you got 10 millimeter here and here, and two over here and two in the back. These are studs actually. So you need to, once you undo this side, pick up on it and slide it over um, to get it out. I remember hearing about that. <clears throat> uh, what else do you got? Bro, your brake boost airline is right over here. You gotta get that. Here's that cable harness that goes to one to here, one to your throttle body, and this guy goes to your air intake. Just trying to clue you in on what's there. Once you get that out of the way, you can see all the way down there. I got actually a little bit of mud up here where we went mudding. Um, so I definitely use it as a Jeep. <laughs> and I use a ladder, a little bit easier when you have a lifted. It's a little bit easier to go up one step or two steps so where you can lay down, make it a little more comfortable. I put a universal on a 10 millimeter, that way I can get in over here with a little bit of an extension. That'll help. take them all the way off the stud because I don't want them dropping down into the engine. That's always my luck. There's those two there. I need to get my little tray, magnetic tray, get them. I'll come around the side, get the two over there, and then I'll be right back with you. All righty, hopefully you guys can see this. Let me get in here. There is a screw right there. I did not loosen that, so they did not even tighten that. That's part of the air intake, so they missed that one. I did do that one, and I did that one. These couple right here, these four. I did not do that back one, which is right under there. 
So they forgot to do that one. Besides, um, that's the way I found my plug last time right there. Um, I don't see any oil right there, so I don't think that's a huge contributor, but they did forget to do that one. All righty. That's the kind of workmanship I was receiving. So you have eight bolts holding it down. You got four right here, the one they didn't do back there. And then you got the three here and one over here. Nope, one right here. That's the eight that hold it down. And you got two tens in the front here, two tens in the back there. These two tens right over here. And then this guy should pop off. Should. Keyword, should. At least it's a beautiful day out here today. All right, let me give you a better view than that. Okay, so we pop that off. No big deal. He's right there. Um, here is your little gaskets that go in there. Um, this guy is like a noise dampering insulation. Put that with it. You do not want to leave that out because you got to put it back. So lay it on top of it so you know it goes in there because <laughs> you don't want to forget it. And I'll just climb right up here. And this is what it looks like. We got to take this guy out. This is the lower intake. That was the upper intake. This is the lower intake. Um, and that's held in with a couple eights. You got a couple hoses back there you got to watch. Um, but so far, so good. And now you got to disconnect your, um, uh, that's your fuel line for your things. You can leave that attached, um, but disconnect your coil packs on each side. That side's pretty open. This side, as you see, is up underneath. You got to feel around with your hands. That's a little bit aggravating. But like I said, it's not something that's complicated like I did on the differentials and all. It's just time consuming and you got to have patience. That's all. It's nothing complicated. Not like setting up a rear end um, with the backlash and all the specs and everything. So it's, you know, perfectly easy to do. But I got a lot of oil in there. I got to see why I have that. Um, anyway, that's it. Let's get this thing done. So now you got eight eight millimeter bolts that need to be picked up um, and you have to disconnect your fuel connectors in here pull up on the red, red tabs disconnect those disconnect your oil packs um, this side is a little bit more of a pain in the butt because they're kind of hidden up underneath here but you can get to it you also have you know this bracket right here i guess you could take it off with the other 10 millimeter get that out of your way but it's really not going to do much good because you still have the ac lines in your way but we're going to get those eight millimeters out there's i don't know how many of them four or five you got a couple back there you have to get two of them which isn't too bad but you got to get them out um, and then we'll pull this lower intake down be right back hey just a tip this guy is a body parts plastic it's got the little hook on it it works great for pulling those red tabs up on the connectors um instead of trying to reach your finger in there and pulling up on it i use one of those with a hook you could use a screwdriver of course but it's you don't have that angle as you do here let me go see what that dog wants all right you got three injector cables like these guys the back one back there is uh a bear and that's to put it nicely just so uh, it doesn't get censored it is a son of a gun but anyway now let me take out the eight millimeter should be able to take out that lower air intake Let's see what happens Alrighty, so you take out those eight you got to wiggle it to the driver's side get it out from underneath all these hoses just lay it over there i didn't take off the fuel line that way it doesn't spew out a bunch of fuel but that's your oil cooler right down in there or yeah, the oil cooler. That's where your oil filter is. There's the oil cooler. Some connections right there on the back. Um, just got to be careful of those. I'm going to check all the fittings back there, make sure everything's tight. It doesn't look bad. I mean, there, there's definitely a puddle of oil right back there. So somewhere, I'm going to check the bolts, make sure all those are tight on that, and see what happened. I don't know what the heck it could be, but we're going to check it. It's leaking, definitely. So, all righty, guys. Alrighty guys, sorry I got sidetracked. Not real good at this video. And um, there's the new one in there. <clears throat> the two plugs are in the 
very back right there. You got to do undo that one's a pressure sending unit and I think temperature, water temperature or something like that. And then the hose, the braided one right there in the center, right below the red, I used a hose clamp, clamp that off. That's your water that goes through there to cool it. So anyway, that's it. And then it just takes those eight. If you look down on the sides, I think it's like eight or something like that. Um, inverted eight millimeter torque. Let me show you what the socket looks like. Hold on. And I vacuumed. Let's see if we get this thing to focus. It's an inverted torque. So I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see with the sun. There we go. You got to get that. It's eight millimeter inverted torque. I got the set at or where was it? See, there it is, an E8. Oh, trying to get this thing to focus again. There it is, E8, inverted torque. Um, you need that to take it off. And then I brought the shop back up and vacuumed all the oil, any coolant. Sorry for the wind. Let me get below here. As you can see, poured out. <laughs> um, I vacuumed all the stuff out of there to clean it up. But uh, hopefully that's it. We'll see what happens. So talk to you guys in a little bit. All right, so now you got to reverse everything. I got to wiggle that guy in from the driver's side over to the passenger side, get up underneath there, bolt that down, hook up all the electrical connections for your fuel injectors and all that. And then go with the upper intake. So that's it. I'm just going to reverse the process now. Um, there's some really good videos online of how to do this. So follow those if you have questions, not mine. <laughs> but uh, just let you know what I'm doing today. Alrighty guys, just about done. I got the harness plugged back in. Your tubes, you gotta remember which way they go and everything. These two vacuum lines, this, I gotta plug in some of the stuff for the throttle body and positioning sensor. And also your airflow, mass airflow, which I got to put that little piece in right there. I sprayed out while I had it out. I sprayed everything out in here, cleaned out all the ports. Same with the middle intake. Um, I use my little tray, keep all my bolts in. Make sure you do that. But anyway, here's a couple of plugs you got to put back together. Brake booster goes right here. Um, I made sure to get all them gaskets in place when I bolted it back down. I'll go back through it one more time around the top, make sure I have everything plugged in and hoses. And before I put this top on, I will spray it real good back there with some brake park cleaner. Uh, I gotta clean the driveway anyway. I didn't realize that much would pour out. It is a mess. <laughs> so use that uh, Dawn spray, the pump spray, that new stuff. Man, I'll tell you, it's a little expensive, but it works great on a driveway and a little brush and it comes right up. Um, but I'll spray all up in here, make sure all this is clean before I put the, the little plastic cover on there. <clears throat> anyway, hopefully it shows you that you can do it. You know, just the only special tool you need is that torque socket, not a torque male. It's a female. Um, the 8 E8, I think it is, for those bolts for the oil cooler. Other than that, I mean, it, it should take you two hours to do and the part was 80 bucks online at Amazon. It comes the next day. So it's a piece of cake. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I will talk to you guys later. And let me know if you need to see anything else. I'll probably be working on it with this rust, not a rust bucket, but anything else. And I am going to bumper F it right into an oak tree if I get anything else with this thing. I've had enough. Not really. I love it. But it's all part of it. But it's so easy to work on. All right, talk to you guys later.